Okay, let's do this guys. Today, I'm gonna be sharing with you 10 thing, 10 things you need to know about travel and filmmaking. This is not gonna be your standard video of just listing off things you already knew. No, I am not gonna say that you need a drone for travel photography and videography because we already know that. And no, I'm not gonna tell you that you need a Polaroid camera because that is next week's video. Stay tuned. Today's video is gonna be abstract things that you didn't know about that are gonna be very helpful for you. They're things that I've learned over the past four years of making films. Some of them are even things that I only learned about within the past month. From software to hardware, these are things that are extremely relevant here in 2019. Let's get right to it. Number one is a solid solution to keeping your files safe while traveling on the road, and that is an app by the name of Hedge. Now, if you haven't heard of it before, essentially what it is, is it is a way to make sure that every single little megabit every tiny little pixel of your photos of your videos that you're transferring from your memory cards onto your hard drives or from a hard drive to another hard drive is successfully being transferred I don't know if you've ever experienced this before because I have a handful of times using finder on my MacBook I have dragged files from one place to another and basically just walked away from the computer and when I got back nobody's telling me that everything made it over okay but I'm usually just going off the assumption that it all made it fine a couple times that has been like shooting myself in the foot when I realized that either the transfer failed halfway through or some of the files corrupted during transfer. This is where Hedge is incredibly valuable. But in my opinion, that is like the secondary thing that's important here. The most important thing that it can do is this. One second. There you are. Scenario number one, you're done shooting for the day. So what I normally do and what most people will do is they will immediately be putting that footage onto an external hard drive. But what happens if this hard drive breaks? What happens if it corrupts or you drop it? You've basically lost all of your files. All your eggs were in one basket. What Hedge allows you to do is you can now plug in two hard drives to your laptop at the very same time and with the click of one button, you can quickly send over those files to two hard drives. Now meaning you have two copies in hand, which means if one breaks, one drops, one gets lost, at least you still have a backup and that is so important. I'm so lucky to be here today because I started my YouTube career with one hard drive putting up all eight months of travel on one drive. I used to accidentally drop the drive. I would pull it out without safely ejecting it. I don't know how I didn't lose all those files, but if I had, I would not be sitting here today doing the job that I love most. Start the good habits right now. And I will say that all software and hardware I mentioned here in this video will be linked down below. Okay guys, so this is a really cool one. I've been using it for about a year now. It's called myairbridge.com. And basically what it is, it's kind of like Dropbox. You can easily send files to your friends. You can go right to the website and you can send up to two gigabytes without even creating a profile. You can just drag and drop your clips into my airbridge and send a link to your friend so that they can download it. It'll be available for a fixed amount of days, but if you get on their paid plans, you can go as much as like 100 gigabytes on a single transfer. And that's actually how I've been sending my files to my remote editors when I've been working with them. They have different tiers of plans and they're extremely affordable. The one I was doing was more of an enterprise level and it allowed me to send up to 100 gigabytes in a single transfer and and they'd be available on the download for about 30 days. So I love my AirBridge, I'm a huge believer in it. And a great thing that you can do is if you're midway transferring and let's say you have to leave, you're not completed the transfer or the Wi-Fi crashes, you can pause it and resume it in another place at another time as long as you do it within three days. That midway transfer will still be available so that's extremely handy, especially when you're traveling to places like the Philippines. So this one right here is kind of an interesting story because who would have ever thought that an ad on YouTube would actually lead me to something that I really needed. So there was this one ad that I probably hit skip ad about 10 times, maybe even 15 times, but on that 16th time I decided to find out what it was about. And that is where I came across an app by the name of frame.io. Now if you're not familiar with it, basically what it allows you to do is it gives you an incredible way to get feedback from your clients or to collaborate with teams when you're working within Final Cut or Premiere Pro. It's an unbelievable resource, invaluable if you're you're working with a team just like I'm now starting to do. Scenario one, you have a client, you're working with a hotel or maybe it's a paid campaign and somebody's hired you to make them a video. Now most of the time you send them the final video and they have to be like, okay, uh, at 59 seconds in the video, I want this removed. At 128, I want this moved a little bit to the left or 115, remove that part entirely. Now that gets really challenging when there's a ton of feedback from the client. 
Now what Frame does is it allows you to upload your final video into a platform that allows them to give you extremely detailed feedback within Frame.io and you can actually import those feedback notes directly back into the software, meaning that you spend way less time being like, oh was it at 59, oh was it at 128 and not to mention if you're working with clients, what better way to look professional than to have a software that literally makes their lives easier. Instead of them having to go between the YouTube unlisted video and back to the text messages to text you what went wrong with the video, now they can do it all in one place and they can even use tools to like highlight things, draw on things and again you just directly re-import that into Final Cut, Premiere, whatever you're working with. It's so excited about it. I'm so happy this came into my life. Scenario number two is my scenario at the moment where I'm working with a team now. So imagine my remote editor gets to what he believes to be the end of the edit. From there he can hit the upload button to frame. From there I can easily put some feedback. It can quickly be sent right back to him and again he imports it back into Final Cut, completes the edit and right there we've probably saved about an hour with every video. That is an incredible saving and it's definitely not to be overlooked when you're trying to look professional with brands. Number four. The next thing I want to recommend is something I can't really grab right now because it's plugged in, but get a power bar for travel filmmaking because when you check into a lot of guest houses, sometimes the budget ones will only have a single plug and so if you need to charge your drone batteries, if you need to charge your camera, I highly recommend having that because it allows you to have up to five of them on a single little bar that's easily slipped into your pack. And also I really recommend putting a universal adapter on the end of it so no matter where you travel to, you have up to those five to be plugging in your devices for fast charging. Number five is a little thing by the name of the cloud. Now you've probably heard of it before but I wanted to talk about it because every single day it's becoming more relevant. Basically what this is, is it's the ability to store your footage, your videos, your documents, basically everything and anything saved to your computer, your phone, it can now be stored in very safe and secured servers that are owned by Amazon or Google and that are actually scattered all around the world. The amazing thing about it is they have systems where if one of their servers dies, you don't lose your footage. It's actually stored in several places. There's redundancies so that if they lose a drive or a server or an entire giga server, I don't really know how it works, but it will still theoretically be there. So it's ultra secure. It's easy to set up. You can just go to the website and start dragging and dropping your files, your videos, whatever you need. And as long as you have good enough upload speeds or download speeds, you can fairly easily be accessing those files from the cloud. Now they're actually quite affordable you kind of pay for what you need and there's even some providers that offer unlimited. Now I will say unlimited in quotations because if you're like me and you have upwards of 30 terabytes, 40 terabytes and quickly growing, it's not going to be a good idea to be downloading those files. Yes, maybe theoretically you can stretch their unlimited and get all 30 terabytes up there, but I'm reading of some people that are experiencing crazy throttling where they basically can't get their files back quickly enough to ever operate it in a commercial viable way. That was a mouthful. So what I'm really saying is it's not for everyone. It doesn't fix every need. A lot of people think the cloud is the answer to everything. What they don't realize is if I were to use Amazon's cloud or something like that, which isn't technically unlimited, but allows you to operate it commercially, I would be paying like tens of thousands of dollars if I was continuously uploading and downloading from it. And so when you start running into those tens of thousands of dollars, it starts making sense to look at other options. And so that's going to lead us to point number six. What is point number six, Christian? Let me tell you since you're already here, unless of course you've left the video. But if you've left the video, you're not hearing this. If you've left the video, you're not part of Team Get Lost. So if you're somebody that's started to get in a situation where you're beginning to fill up these drives, it means you're obviously shooting enough footage that you're probably going to start to be considering an option like the one I've developed. Now you might not be quite at this level yet because, well frankly, I never thought I'd get to this level, but there are steps to get there. So basically what we're going to be talking about today is a NAS. It is called a Network Attached Storage. It's something I never really wanted to learn about but found myself needing to learn about because it is the way to operate my business, to grow it, to scale it, to be able to access my files from anywhere around the world and basically have my own personal Dropbox. This guy right here is an 8-bay Synology DS1819 Plus NAS and the guy on top of it is an expansion pack allowing me to have another five. I also have one more Synology that they sent me there. This is not a sponsored video by them but they did give me the equipment. I pretty much knocked their doors down. I was like so 
so excited about their product and I'm really glad they wanted to work with me on this because I've done my research, I had to do my research, and I think this is the solution for so many people. Now, most people won't need to have five drives, let alone the ability to have 18 like I can here, but you might need two drives. You can have it so that if one of the drives dies, you still have all your footage. It's what's called a redundancy. It's a great way to store your files, to have peace of mind, and the great thing is, it's like not that expensive to get a two bay Synology NAS. Yes, you're gonna have to buy some hard drives, which can range anywhere from four terabytes, upwards of 14 terabytes. I put 14 terabytes in each and every single one of these bays here of my eight bay. That was expensive. That cost me about four and a half thousand dollars for those drives. But again, enterprise level solutions, I wanna build the foundations that allow my team to be able to access these files. And so what the Synology case does, basically what these cases do, they give these hard drives a brain and an ability to connect to the internet and so now all of the things that are stored in there can be accessed by my remote editors. I can actually set permission levels where some folders are only viewable by certain team members, where some folders can only be downloaded but not uploaded or vice versa. I have all the control in the world. Now the other amazing thing is that unlike using an unlimited plan with Google or Dropbox where you're going to experience serious throttling if you start to try to access those files too often, this is not going to experience any Throttling. Your only bottleneck is going to be your internet speeds. If I get myself a gigabit internet speed here back at home, I can be accessing these basically as quickly as I could if I was taking it right off a hard drive in person. That is an incredible feature to have. To be able to safely store files wherever I have my NAS, to be able to have an editor all the way in Zimbabwe. Scenario number one, your NAS is in Canada, you're traveling on the road and you're in Hong Kong, and your client is in Egypt. Your client says, hey Christian, I wanna pay you $10,000 for all of the footage from your trip to the Philippines. Now I can be all the way in, where the heck was I? <laughs> now you can be all the way in Hong Kong on mediocre internet, you can access your NAS and use the high speed internet back in Canada to send those files all the way to your client in Egypt. It's like having a supersonic hard drive at the disposal of your fingertips that you can control from anywhere in the world. Let's take the client out of the equation. Let's just say you wanna send a file to yourself. Well, you could be on the opposite side of the world from your NAS and still accomplish that. Go into the Synology app and from there you can directly download whatever saved on the NAS on the opposite side of the world as if it was right there in your living room. The bottlenecks will of course be the internet speeds that you're dealing with but it is an incredible solution and I couldn't be more stoked on it. Number seven, Siete, is going to be a completely free software if you're using it for personal use. It's called TeamViewer. Now TeamViewer is something I've been using to do what's called a RADS. I can have my computer in Canada and I can be in Taiwan and using a laptop in Taiwan, I can actually control the actual mouse, the cursor that you see on the screen on this computer here in Canada. You'll just need to download the software on the two computers you plan to use it with. But let's say I have a home computer here in Canada and I'm gonna be traveling on a family vacation for the next two months. Well, what happens if I find out that while I'm on the road, I forgot a photo, I forgot an application, I forgot something that was saved on that computer. Well, now I can use the RAS as long as the home computer is turned on and I can take full control over that computer. And again, I could actually send myself files using something like my AirBridge. That was actually my old system of sending myself files. Now I will say that it is definitely a bit of a rough experience. You have a bit of a lag time when you're dragging the cursor around, but if you need to get files and you're in a bit of a pinch, it's an amazing option and it's free. This one right here took me about a half day to set up, but I'm so glad that I did. It is called 1Password. I got it under the recommendation of a close friend who's really savvy on internet security. And honestly, he got me realizing how exposed I was to hackers, to having my password stolen. 1Password is an incredible software that basically gives you the ability to have all of your passwords saved in one place. That probably sounds a little sketchy, right? Well, let me explain why it's not. Right now, I'm kind of guessing that your password looks a little bit something like your family's name, your pet's name, your favorite sport, followed by your birth year or something like that. It's personalized, it's predictable, and you probably use the same password across several different logins from Instagram, Facebook, your email. You probably repeat your passwords a lot. But what if you had a password that was such a unrelatable, unrememberable string of letters and numbers that you could never remember it? 
and it was different from every single login. Well, that's basically what 1Password offers, is it actually has a scrambling software that creates unique passwords for every login, and with the click of one button, you're able to just press that button, and it'll actually go in from your iPhone, or from Safari, or Chrome, whatever you're using, and it'll just input your username and your login information, and boom, bada bing, you're logged in. Now, how do you authorize it? Well, that's where you need to remember 1Password. Ideally, a rather sophisticated, a longer password that is super safe. Now what happens if somebody ever found out that password? Whether you typed it in on a corrupted device, whether your internet was hacked and somebody was able to spy on you, again, this stuff exists and that's why it's important you do this. The good thing about it is, the only way somebody will ever be able to get into 1Password is if they have your password and they have one of your authorized devices. So at the starting phase, you basically choose which devices are going to be authorized and from that point moving forward, the only way for anyone to get in with your password is if they also have the authorization key. So getting the authorization key is like basically next to impossible. Never write it down, they give it to you on a security key, you basically just print that, hide it somewhere in your house, put it somewhere on like a USB that you hide under a mattress, somewhere that basically nobody would ever know what that code meant on its own, and they still need to have both of these things. So for them to have those two things is extremely unlikely, and that's why there's basically no better internet security solution for the average consumer. If you're a travel filmmaker, if you've got an Instagram account, an email, or even if you're not, save everything with one password and your odds of ever getting into some serious cybersecurity problems are gonna go way down, dog. I'm so tired. <laughs> I have a flight in like five hours, help me. The next one is actually two, so that's a serious value package, but that's what you get here on the Lost LeBlanc channel, so don't forget to subscribe if you're not already. I'm gonna give you two really cool apps that are great for travel filmmaking to allow you to do some work from your mobile phone. The first one is actually called Splice, and Splice is actually owned by GoPro, I'm pretty sure they acquired it, and what it allows you to do is do some minor edits within your phone. So basically, what you have a Premiere Pro on Final Cut, take it and dumb it down and make it like the most simplified version of that and that is what splices. My favorite use of it is filming with my cell phone and then after being able to go into my music and actually putting the clip with the music. So then I can take cell phone video with a favorite song of mine, combine them together and upload them to Instagram. Now another app that you've probably seen without knowing what it's called is called Unfold. What Unfold is, is it's a really cool way to make Instagram stories more interesting. You can do collage effects, you can do these kind of like ripped page effects and combine different images together. It's a very aesthetically well thought out design app that allows you to take your Instagram stories to a whole nother level. Okay, number 10, Uno Mas To Go. Guys, this right here is an app that will simplify your life if you're a traveler. Now, how many times have you logged out of your Instagram or your Gmail account, your Google account, and when you try to log back in, it's like, hey, we need to do two-step verification. We've sent a text message to your mobile number. Well, guess what? I'm no longer in Canada or I'm no longer in Bali, so the number you tried to contact, I'm not getting text messages to anymore. Which, by the way, if you don't have two-step turned on, you're just asking to be hacked. Turn on two-step verification. In order to be able to prevent that situation where you can't receive text messages, download the app called Google Generator. Basically what it is, is it's a replacement for having to receive text messages. Instead of receiving a text, you have a Google code that is generated like every six seconds. It gives you a brand new one. And so if you have to go through two-step verification, instead of putting in the six-digit code that you get from a text message, you actually put in that Google code that was generated the most recently. And that will allow you to get in with two-step. And now the only way somebody can get into that account is if they have the password to the account and of course they have the device that generates the new code every six seconds. Bonus round! Bonjour mes amis et bienvenue à beautiful Paris. I wanted to give you guys two more here because I'm unpredictable. This top 10 can't hold me. Now the first one is a service I use every single video and it has been for the past like two years. Epidemic Sound is the biggest game changer that basically ever came into my YouTube career. It's where I get all of my copyright free music, meaning I don't have to worry about copyright strikes, I don't have to worry about any claims on my videos. I can use incredible music that doesn't compromise my videos and have peace of mind knowing I can monetize that video. It is the biggest must have in all of the YouTube services. So if you want to check it out, 
the link is down below and they give me a small kickback. It's honestly one of my favorite revenue streams because I get paid for something I love. Now, a second service that I started using more recently that is honestly becoming one of my favorites as well is Storyblocks. Now, Storyblocks is one of the ways that I've been using footage, everything from like the cloud storage animations to the shots of Egypt because I've actually never been there before. But it gives me so much versatility and again, I can still commercialize, I can still monetize my videos without worrying about copyright claims or anything of that sort. Just like Epidemic, it's a subscription-based model and if you guys are curious about it, the link is down below. So guys, that right there is 10 things that I hope you didn't know about because I want to provide value with every video and not just beat a dead horse because I'm all about animal rights here. So guys, if you like animals and you like cool stuff that I just talked about, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to share it with your friends, your family, your filmmaker community, your grandmother, and guys, as always, I'm posting new videos every Saturday. Let's get lost again in the next one.